Oh, hi, I'm, I'm Hal Abelson. I teach at MIT. I've taught at MIT like forever. Uh, these days I'm visiting Google and one of the things I did at Google was have the idea that Google ought to be able to make something that could put kids in control of all these smartphones and mobile technology. So we call that App Inventor and that's what I'm doing now. Hi, I'm Asha. I co-founded the App Lab here at Youth Radio. I started getting involved with the App Lab just because I was in the newsroom and I was writing a lot about technology and like how influential it was in my life and like related to different like social norms for teenagers and um, collaboratively at the end of the day somehow we decided well young people are interested um, in technology they're consuming it every day but we actually need to give them some of the power to produce it um, yeah, their own right. technology and so that's what started the app lab kids come to see themselves as creative and having expertise that matters to people mm -hmm. so they can make something that the community can use and gosh, they are the ones who made it. They're the ones who are the experts. They're the ones who are in control. They're not just, just sort of using some computer, pro con some consumer product. And that's a lot of, I think that's a lot of the vision of the innovation mm -hmm. Lab. It's not that the kids are innovating. It's that they're innovating around stuff that matters. So it's not merely that I'm doing mm -hmm. some exercise in writing a computer program. It's that I'm really thinking about, about the society and the social milieu and what mm -hmm. could I personally do with my friends mm -hmm. that makes a difference. And that's different. That was not possible, gosh, even five years ago. One of the benefits of having this app lab inside of what is a media company, and Youth Radio has been known for their like content. Yeah, great. Um, mm -hmm. They're producing like great content, whether that be video or journalism or even music. It's like we create content. And I think the great thing about having like an app lab and this like little tech bubble inside of this content, like youth-driven powerhouse of sorts is that we know how to make content and I think with a lot of the apps that we do all this market research it's like how does it actually look and what's in it like is there something in this app that I'd want to use or is there something in this app that I'd want to read because you can have some apps that do cool stuff but if there's what is the like value in it and I think yeah. that's the part you're talking about with the young people it's like they're choosing what the, that value piece is. Is it just photos of your family? Is it stories that relate to where you are geographically? Is it, um, I think that's the point. When people ask me what's important to teach in computing, I say, think about what's worth making. And that's the thing that I want, I want my MIT students to do, I want kids to do. It's not just can you code it up, it's is there something that's worth making? And then you guys come and you think about it from a media perspective. What you'd really like is just think about the app as another medium where mm -hmm. you have a lot of the same considerations. It's mm -hmm. got to be aesthetically beautiful. It's got to be something that people are going to want to look at and want to use. Mm -hmm. So you're already thinking like that. Mm -hmm. And this, and the idea of apps is just another medium to start doing that same kind of thinking in. I think one of the challenges too is with the idea of iteration and with this, how do you keep so you you have this young person, they, they have this idea, they've invested and they've done it. Okay, well, the, one of the first things you learn about computer programming, if it's app or whatever, is once you try it that first time, it might work, and the second time, right. it might not work. Exactly. Um, and then how do you deal with that, ugh, I was working on this for six hours and it was working, yeah. but now it's not working. You're like, well, that's, you gotta keep going. So I think that's one of the challenges, like keeping them motivated. And I think that's where the, um, the teamwork and the mentorship really come in to give like uh, a lens yeah. into it. It's like if you had a startup, you know what I mean? I don't know what the success rate of startups is, but your product might be completely different from what your first prototype of it was. Oh, you that's know, what you have to understand, right? You might, you know, as, as you develop stuff and as you think about stuff, mm -hmm. it's gonna be different from what you started with. Mm -hmm. Keeping them motivated and then like accepting that your idea can change. Right. I'd love to see the the kids here make something that really really is used you know, around the country and around the world and is looked at as a model for gee here's here's the creativity of this place the power of mobile computing and boy it all came together and there's something that made a difference mm -hmm. so that's my big one and then along with that on a much smaller scale i'm just always excited with the amount of young people we get excited about knowing or like coming in thinking one thing about what programming can be or what creation can be and then watching that transformation and 
watching the girl that was quiet, you know, and some of the girls are loud and boys too. And they're like, um, I can't do it. And then to a point of, actually I'm teaching the new students how to do this. I can do this. I'm putting on my college application. I'm reconsidering yeah. what I could do. Maybe that's computer science. Maybe that's research. Maybe that's design, but pushing them forward. And that's just like, the young people that we get to work with and then with some of our like curriculum and tool kits and outreach and workshops. Absolutely. I just love that moment where it's like, I didn't think I could do that and I can and I'm confident about that now.